So Baby Metal came out with a new song, like we were just talking about early earlier with what how do you say his name? Little Little Uzi Vert. Little Uzi Vert. I'm gonna let Ryan take this away, man. What did you think of the song? Well, okay. Uh I heard <laughs> about the collaboration and I made a comment on the Discord about something about musical wars, which that was a bit crass. But like people just making doing collaborations, you know, because it's gonna benefit monetarily, which is why you do do them. But I did find out that Lil Uzi Vert is a fan of J Rock and like a fan of baby metal. So it seems like, you know, it's like a genuine collaboration, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Um so I just uh I just heard it. I just checked it out before the podcast and there's parts of it I really, really like, and there's parts of it I I don't really like. So, but I think uh, I think after if I listen to it a few more times, it'll probably I'll probably warm up to it. But overall, it's a pretty cool song. I haven't listened to Uzi, Lil Uzi Vert at all. I just know he had a fucking diamond embedded in his forehead. Other than that, I haven't checked <laughs> anything out. But I, I glanced audibly glanced at a couple other tunes on the album. It sounds like there's a, there's like a heavier edge to some of the music. So the rapping style. I mean, you guys know I like hip hop, but the whole heavily bill coated stuff I'm not a big fan of. So, uh, I'm I'm willing to look a little more into what he does and just see kind of how the relationship is or how they came about. But I think uh, they're also talking about like one of the was it guy guy the one of the writers for Pale Dusk kind of wrote this song. That makes him. sense. If Pale Dusk is on this song, can anyone confirm that? Do you know? Andrew? I don't know if they're on but it, but the writer. I don't know about writing, uh, but yes, um, Day Day uh, did the composition and arrangement for it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, so with, I thought it does sound very Pale Dusk. It actually does. So that kind of makes sense. Like when we heard the song, what is it? Uh, Trident just uh, released mm -hmm. where Spoopy. they produced the song. Um, one of our favorite ones. What's the name of it? I can't remember. Yeah, Spoopy. Spoopy, yeah. So From that makes out, yeah. total sense. But something that I thought was cool is they really go outside the box, but they also have some things that you can latch onto. Because when that heavy riff comes later on in the middle song, I was like headbanging my ass off. I was like, fuck yeah. Because at first I was weirded out with how they put Sue's vocals and the key that she was in over the certain layers of guitar. And I have my breakdown releasing tomorrow, guys, so you can see me my head explode but um because it literally exploded i was like what the fuck is going on the entire time i had to like stop it repause it and like i was did it had no it was so weird it was so weird it's like one of those songs what I couldn't that i had to get, learn to like try what to I couldn't figure get confirmation out. on was uh i'm assuming that the kami band did the heavy metal backing parts on that track uh but i couldn't get confirmation on it i'm just assuming that the kami band uh, well, really did contribute do. the the layers to the the mm. metal parts. They do the studio stuff so much, do they? Comedy band? It's more of a live thing. Um, no? sometimes they do. Sometimes they uh I know in the original albums it, that would happen where like some of them would I think it was Leda. Wasn't Leda on some tracks? Correct me if I'm wrong. I think I see Muller in the chat. He knows a lot about Bay Metal, Jake. Um, but uh I know Leda did some of the tracking and then he oh, okay. did play for Comedy Band here and there, and but not all the time. So they don't necessarily have the same. Coba Metal did a post about Pale Dust thinking them. So they did produce the song, and that makes perfect sense. So right on. And I think that's amazing. The produce like Pale Dust. Which member is the producer, guys? Let me know in the chat. He is an amazing producer. He made Trident sound badass. I think he did a great job with Lil Uzi and Baby Metal and combining it together. It's progressive. It's weird. It's definitely something like Ryan said. You have to listen again. Go listen to it again, because when I first heard it, my head was just like, F my life. <laughs> I couldn't even focus. It was really hard. But then they repeat it again, so you can latch on the, onto the weirdness, just like with Pal Dust. They they repeat that weird part section again, so you can like try to understand it. So I think it makes it a little better when you go back to listen to it. And then you have those riffs that you can latch onto. So it's definitely pushing the envelope, which I think I want to hear in music. For the most part, I know we say we want to hear that, and then we're like, "Ugh!" So it does, like Ryan said, you have to go listen to it again just to give it that chance because it is a good song, I think, but it is way different <laughs> than anything. Yeah, I've what's heard offsetting before. to me about it was just how it uh, is such a absolute hybrid. Like you can definitely get a flavor of when Baby Metal comes in and does their part, and then when they drop out, and then Uzi comes in. It's like okay, there's there's the rapper uh, doing doing that part of it, um, 
But then also in researching the article, you find out on the whole album that this was released on uh, called Pink Tape, which just dropped Friday. Uh, there's a lot of songs like that. Uh, they do a cover of Chop Suey, which is actually kind of faithful to the System wow. of a Down song, uh, which is pretty, pretty cool. Another song on there that I liked uh, called Werewolf was a collab with Bring Me the Horizon. And looking at uh, Uzi's kind of bio, uh, one thing that kind of stood out was that um, uh, they say um, the influences are between Marilyn Manson and Kanye West. Uh, so uh, kind of a bit of a uh, interesting combo there. Getting attached to one of his tunes would definitely uh, help whoever does it, I think. The dude's got, <laughs> he's got fans. Well, and he did a whole metal album because he wanted to. Like, yeah. that's the crazy part. Mm -hmm. Lil Uzi just was like, hey, I'm going to do a metal album. And some people, there's some comments that say that's not very good. Um, but if it's anything like this baby metal collab, I'm still interested in checking it out. Because if it's this experimental, I can see why people don't like it. If it's this experimental. I can totally see why reviewers would be, oh, this is trash and not even give it a chance. Because most people will just close their mind and just be like, eh. For me, I just like take the headache head on. And just like let me listen to it again, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, I need to look extreme, a little more, yeah. a little more into what Vert does because he seems like a guy that if you if you're a fan of his, you're gonna expect some some different shit. Like if mm. you're a fan of his and close minded, then you probably w wouldn't be a fan because the dude likes to, like I said, he likes to try different things. And so I mean, I've seen, I read, I glanced at some of the comments. There's like thirty five, or I don't know how many thousand comments, a shitload of them. But there is a lot of them are like. Somebody saying, come on, open your mind. And then some people are like, it's so cool that this happened. So, I mean, the comments are kind of all over, but generally it seemed like people from both camps were, you know, pretty happy with what was going on. Listen, we've talked about it here on the podcast, right? Right. Where we say we want different stuff in the U S this is yeah. a guy from the U S uh, and he's doing this, you know, uh, Lil Uzi is like doing this whole different style which is different it's just going to throw people off in the beginning and then people will get yeah. used to it and then they could enjoy it's, it or it could be the worst thing ever it depends well, i think the different people that you know like rob zombie put eyes on baby metal several years ago and this is going to put a whole different set of eyes on baby metal and so yeah it's going to be it's going to be good mm. yeah me personally i'm a big fan of these collaborations because i think it it helps both sides it, it gives a chance for new audiences to check out uh something that they may not normally be used to uh and maybe they'll find something maybe they'll, maybe they'll find something in, a, in 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 baby metal uh collaboration here that may make them want to go and check out more baby metal and that's what i i hope people will do it it actually reminds me just to give a little bit of uh history uh from my time uh but uh i wonder if anybody else remembers back uh in the 80s when you had Run DMC do a collaboration with Aerosmith, um, and that allowed Aerosmith to kind of come back into the mainstream oh, and become sure, a huge yeah. band again. Yeah. So I, I think these collaborations are a good thing. Yeah, exactly. That was I Walk agree. This Way, right? That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. I think that kind of put, put them on the map, a lot of people's maps, yeah. That's, I, was, I was reading an interview with their, uh, I think, might have been Tyler or Perry were talking about that, and they're like, "Why? Why do you want us to do this?" Like they didn't get it. And then because the song it was an old song, you know, of Aerosmith. Then they did it, and it freaking it helped out Run DMC and Aerosmith, like put them mm -hmm. both back on the mm -hmm. map. So yeah, it was a very very smart move for whoever made that call. So just like that was a smart move, we got Baby Metal reinsurging themselves. Right? They haven't had album in yeah. a very long time. Lil Uzi, Lil Uzi is popping in the U.S. And what better way to grow your U.S. audience like you they did back in the day with Gimme Chocolate? I think this is a perfect thing for them to do. And it's brilliant. And it's going to turn heads. Because even if you don't like it and you listen to it, you're still going to walk away from that song going, what did I just listen to? And you're going to show <laughs> other people. You're like, check this out. What the hell do you think about this? Yeah. And it's that's not going to hurt at all. You know, and it's going to draw more attention to the metal heads. Because as a metal, like person like i listen to a lot of metal or used to um i still like it i like progressive metal and if somebody showed me that i'd be what the hell <laughs> listening to mm -hmm. you know I, but i would have liked to have seen some more some less uh the only way i can think is like bubble gum poppy sound from baby metal on that track like mm. it was good but 
there if it could have been a little a little different type of singing to draw more people in instead of people going what the fuck because like it's a, a shock when it does the change you want more yeah. of a catcher hook right is that what you mean like uh something? not i mean that's catchy as hell but just yeah. more of a singing instead of i don't know it's just that's that's the thing i kind of i wasn't too thrilled about i was like what, yeah they did have like they came in? basically a chorus and then they just sort of repeated that chorus um to carry the main momentum yeah. of the track in my opinion to me, and it's one of those that when stuff. i listen to it i appreciate it while i'm listening to it but then after the song was over i didn't have that urge to like go rush back and listen to it again mm. i was i was listening around it like the rest of the song is really cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I was so. offset. I wanted to hear it over and over again. <laughs> yeah. I th- okay. I think baby metal has retired that old sound. The but we're not getting bubblegum gum pop kind of choruses as much anymore. Maybe you yeah, can but argue that's what they did. Oh, you're saying they well, did? That's probably, yeah, that's probably what they were asked to do, though. I think that's probably that's what, what I think. It was like a very happy upbeat. Yeah. <laughs> it sounded like older baby metal to me. I did. I, I didn't get that yeah, vibe. See, that's. <laughs> I didn't get that vibe. <laughs> I, I'm gonna listen to it again now. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm gonna to check it out to it again, again too. It, it it works because I'm gonna listen to it again because it's freaking crazy. <laughs> well, yeah, John, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, well, I could I could like eliminate all of the people on the uh, watching right now by going into my theory about how people acquire their musical taste. But I was, I'll do that. I'll just say, <laughs> yeah, my, on first. First glance, first listen, I and that's all I've done. Um, it didn't immediately catch my my heart and my attention. You know, well, it caught my attention, but it didn't catch my heart. But you know, with some an artist that I really like, when they're tr- trying something new, I'm always willing to give it a second or third try and see if maybe uh, another day or another listen or two, my receptors are ready for it. I think that's a big part of it. Okay. When sometimes we're totally shocked, like when each one of us for the first time saw a bandmate or the second time, for me the first time, Ryan, I know for you it was the first time. Immediately, you know, I love these people, you know, the, the, yeah. I'm going to be listening to them forever. Mm-hmm. But general, most music for most people, I think you have to you have to listen a few times when it's something that's different than what you've heard before or different from them. Yeah, so, true for me. Yeah. One way of saying uh, it's baby metal. So I'm willing to go and have a couple more listens and mm-hmm. then I'll maybe have a better feel, a better feel for whether I like it or not. Yeah. And for you, are you a baby metal fan in general? Outside of that song, I am. Yeah, not as much as you are, but yeah, um, I, I'm a baby metal fan. And when I don't listen to him for a while, I re- and then I do, I go, wow, why didn't haven't I listened to him for a while? But yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, I am. Yeah, I, I, I definitely jumped right on the opportunity to go see them when I saw that they're touring in my area this year. Hey guys, thank you for watching. The Gaijin guys this year are really trying to up our game in the Japanese music news space. So we really rely on our Patreon supporters and our members over here on YouTube. So thank you so much. So if you guys can help, consider becoming a Patreon supporter or a member. And you also get exclusive group reactions from all of the guys. Stay awesome, everyone. See you in the next one. See you!